Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. It is yours truly. Today this is a paranormal podcast for those of you that are brave enough to join the circle. I took off a little bit of time last week because I you always know I never take time off. Um, and so that's why we didn't have a podcast last weekend. But you know what I thought? Why do we have to wait for the weekend to start uploading podcasts? Why can't I just do it whenever? So that's kind of going to be the goal from here on out. I wanted to just get like real short and sweet and to the point of a question you guys have been asking, which is the law of attraction manifestation. Now I did touch base on this just slightly in the last video, in my last podcast, but I wanted to do a little bit more in depth on this. And, you know, I talked about this a long time ago, like years ago, like way in the beginning of my paranormal channel. And I'm going to be honest, I, I haven't finessed it really till now. Although I really think I've always been really good at manifesting. I do consider myself a master manifester, right? But how do you get to that point? How do you become a master manifester? Now, I'm going to start by, you know, saying this. If you don't believe in manifesting, then this video isn't for you. You know, like I know there's people out there, I, I read it online, they think it's like hot gouache, right? Like, okay, that's fine. Then this isn't for you. I'm not forcing anyone to believe this. This is something that, um, you know, is a very personal journey, right? Now, I feel like I'm a really good example to talk about this because I have manifested some amazing things into my life, right? And I want to talk about all of those things and how I manifested them into my life and you know, sort of my thought process at that moment as it was kind of happening. I mean, I know I've talked about motionless and white, but I also even want to talk about paranormal challenge and back that up a little bit, right? Which is like sort of my OG moment that sort of started was like the very beginning of my career. So manifesting, it does start with the law of attraction, right? Like what is it exactly that you, you want to manifest? What is it exactly that you want in your life? Now, this also ties into me seeing my life review, right? And also this ties into me visiting the other side, having access to my spirit guides, communicating with them almost every other night and understanding that. And this is something that Bashar and Dolores Cannon say as well to back me up. We come to Earth. Earth is an Earth school. And one of the main lessons that we're here to learn is to manipulate energy, right? It is hard because this is a 3D, very dense planet, and there's no other planet like that out there that exists. So when you choose to incarnate here, not only are you stripped of all of your knowledge and who you are on the other side, you come in with amnesia and you get to have free will. But with free will comes in with literally being a baby and not understanding what I'm going to do when I grow up. And Really, it's a matter of finding your passions and sort of following your heart and following whatever it is that you know. I mean, it could literally be like something like God's gift. You know what I mean? And I've talked about that even in my book that I had an ex-boyfriend who was a metal guitarist and he was a savant with the guitar and he should have been famous. He should have been a famous guitarist. He could hear a, a you know Megadeth song or a... Um, Metallica song and he could memorize it after listening to it once and play it back to you. He'd never had a guitar lesson in his life. He was a absolute savant. But the problem was is that you know he didn't end up following his dream, which is just shocking to me. And that's because he didn't have a strong support system around him. So I mean, yes, his parents thought he was amazing. His family thought he was amazing, but nobody really encouraged him and pushed him and sort of I guess you could say nourished him enough to have confidence in himself that he could really pave the way and make that path for himself. And because he wasn't surrounded by like this sort of family unit that supported him enough to give him that heave, ho and push, he really to this day doesn't think that he's all that special. And it's just crazy to me. Then you have someone who's like Kat, right? She was born with a gift from God. Literally, she's an opera singer. Her parents were both famous opera, opera. Hello, am I okay? Her parents were both <laughs> famous opera singers on the um, in Europe, 
and she was given the gift of opera. Not everyone can sing that way, but she's embraced it, right? Like she's done all sorts of stage performances, theater. She's in theater right now. She does theater performances. So it's kind of interesting how you have some people who follow their dreams and some people who don't. Now, Kat definitely was nourished, I guess, on a way where her parents were really encouraging her to sort of use this gifted talent and now she's not afraid to do so. But at the end of the day, when you're now including law of attraction, you also have to find that sort of willpower within yourself. You have to. And now with that being said, I'm going to sort of even include my story about how I've attracted things into my life. And, you know, and I've said this before, God, paranormal's hard, right? Like clearly, like I've done everything I can to try to get my paranormal series signed. And it's just so difficult. I could have made it acting a lot quicker, a lot easier. So I, there was a casting call for paranormal challenge. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I, I, I manifested this. How did this happen to show up in my inbox? I don't even remember seeing the first one. So I put out the casting for it. They, they require certain things like um, send us like a mini video of 30 seconds. You explain, you know, explain you and your team, all of your names, all that stuff. So I sent that in and almost immediately I got back a no, sorry, better luck next time sort of attitude. Now, was I bummed for sure? Of course I was bummed, but I kept that little teeny piece of law of attraction in me where I was like, there's, this has got to, this can't be the only time, right? Like it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. And it's weird because even now when I do manifestations and law of attraction, it's, I'm way better at it now than I was then. Then I was just sort of like scaling the iceberg, if you will. And so I kept obsessing over, God, I just wish I would have gotten that casting. You know what I mean? Like, how do I find another casting? And I remember for months, I was scouring the internet trying to find, like, I was typing in, like, paranormal casting call, da 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 da, da and nothing ever popped up. And then all of the sudden, and I've talked about this before, at 4 a.m. in February of 2011, for some reason... I got a notification out of nowhere. Oh, I think it was on Twitter. I think it was on Twitter. I think I saw Dave Schrader announced that he was looking for two more teams for an upcoming episode of Paranormal Challenge. It was literally like four in the morning because I was in Colorado Mountain Time and Dave's in Minneapolis, right? So I remember it's four in the morning, right? And I got this and why I was up, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, the life of a paranormal investigator. I'm either up all night or I'm in bed by nine. Like there's no in between, right? So I'm up at 4 a.m. I get the notification and I call Aaron. I called my friend Aaron and I woke him up obviously and I, he's the one that was on the show with me. I said, oh my God, another casting call. Should I do it? Should I do it? And he was like, no, don't do it. He's like, we're just going to get turned down again. There's no point to do it. And I was like, really? Like, you think I should just not, not even try? And he's like, no, just let it go. Honestly, I just, I wouldn't even try it. Just let it go. And I was like, really? Okay. Okay. I'm just going to let it go. So for 20 minutes, maybe even a half an hour, I sat in my bed <laughs> in the dark with my cell phone, staring at that tweet from Dave Schrader, staring at it. And I was like, what do I do? What do I do? And I thought to myself, I don't know, man, but like, what's the worst that can happen? No. What's the worst that can happen? No. You know, I feel like that's the first step with, with uh, manifestation is removing the fear out of it, right? What is the worst that can happen? Why don't people ask, you know, if you have a crush on someone, why don't you ask them out? Because the biggest fear is they'll say no. Who cares? You won't be in any different position than you're in now, Right. So that was my thought. So I got up out of bed, I got dressed, I did another video and I sent it in. And I was like, I don't know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And guess what? I woke up the next day at about 8.30. Um, I told my mom, I was like, oh my God. And I was like a nervous wreck for some reason. I don't even know why. And then at like 9.30 that morning, I got an email saying that they were considering me. And that they would call me by like noon my time or 1230 my time for like a conference call to let me know if I got it or not. Now, at this point, I was like 
off of the chain, right? Like I was bouncing off the walls. I was at my mom's house. I was like, mom, I'm freaking out. And she was like, we need to get out of the house so that you can get some air. Cause I just couldn't, couldn't gather myself. So I remember we went shopping for a few hours and then we ended up going to Chili's to eat at the restaurant and we were sitting in Chili's and my phone rang, my phone rang. It was like an hour early and I, I jumped up, I ran outside and they, it, it was the casting producer, Robert. And he said, you got it. We're going to put you on for paranormal challenge. And I was just over the moon. I called Aaron. I was screaming. And I was like, ah, you know what I mean? And we got it. And that is exactly the type of energy that you need to be in, in order to bring in your manifestations. And that's really hard because life is hard, right? So the first step is getting specific. What do you want when you're manifesting? Get real specific. I mean, this is why people do vision boards. Now you can do vision boards. Vision boards are easy. I ha- I do still have vision boards. I have um, I, I'm looking at one on my desktop computer right now. What's on it is some brands that I want to work with, um, some of the cars that I want to work with, the energy I'm trying to project to the world in idols, you could say. I don't talk about my vision boards because they're very personal, so I'll, I won't give you specifics. I have my dream house on there, goals, an amount of money that I want, mantras, right? Like you can do anything with it. I have them on my phone. I have them printed. Um, you need to get specific with what you want. So there's another little problem in there. And I think that people always hit roadblocks and that's the one that I hit the most with ghost girl diaries is whatever your manifestation is, be specific, but do not hold on to the outcome because that is where you hit a roadblock. So to give you a specific example for me is I was doing all of these negotiations for the Ghost Girl Diaries, the series, right? And I was like, I'm going to get signed with this production company, Netflix and Hulu and this production company and this producer. Well, the problem was, was that what if those networks and those producers and production companies aren't supposed to be the ones I'm signed with? Now I'm narrow minded and my, re- my end result is now I'm being way too specific with my end result. That's not my manifestation, right? My manifestation is I am going to get Ghost Girl Diaries, the series signed. It doesn't matter how or why or when or where. That stuff, you have to let the universe take care of it. You have to let your guides step in and take care of it. And that's hard, right? Because as a human, we want control. We want control of everything. But at the end of the day, we don't have control of anything really like your guides are working overtime right now to work with you you may not see it you may not know it but they are and they're probably annoyed as hell with you but that's beside the point um so essentially you have to find out what you want get very specific on details even i even tell people go on zillow and search for your dream house print out a photo of your dream house it doesn't matter if it's two million dollars Don't think about the end result. How are you going to get the $2 million? Don't think about that. But don't think about it. it, That starts to get negative, right? If you think, oh my God, I'll never have that $2 million to get the house. If that is what you believe, you're right. You're right. This is what I tell people with the law of manifestation all the time. The, The energy that we vibrate with the universe... The universe does not know the difference between sad and happy, good and bad. It just knows whatever the energy is, right? So for you, you might be saying, womp, womp, I'm never going to have that $2 million. And the universe is like, okay, so I will match your energy and you're never going to have $2 million. Now the universe, it's not being negative toward you or bad. It's just matching your energy. So instead you have to say, I... I manifest money easily and effortlessly. Everything I need and want wants and needs me more. That house wants me as much as I want it because even that house is energy. And I know that's a crazy concept and it takes a while to really get that ingrained in your brain, which is why I really believe in mantras and affirmations like things like, um, I am famous. I am beautiful. I am 
you really have to talk yourself up to get your energy up. You can't, you are one in a million, one, one and only person that of existence, not only on this earth, but of like this entire existence of universe. Right. And because you are one of one, your manifestations in your path will never align to somebody else perfectly because it, like, for example, Kat and I both want to do ghost girl diaries. Right. But her reality of Ghost Girl Diaries will be very different because she's not an executive producer on it. Sure, she wants to help me manifest it, but this is my ship. I'm the captain here, right? Her perception, her reality, her manifestation is not the same as mine. So when you're writing out affirmations, things that you want, things that you desire, it cannot be what you and your boyfriend want or you and your mom want or you and your family or you and your husband because their perception of it is going to be completely different. Which is why when I'm talking about mantras and affirmations, you have to build yourself up because you're the only one that's manifesting in your own world, period. There might be other people that come along for the ride, but their perception of the reality is going to be completely different than what yours is. So what are you manifesting? Because I was re-watching the video and I was like, you know, I left a couple of things out that are really important. And I want to put this sort of ingrained in your brain first before you start this law of attraction. Now, also keep in mind you know, I come from nothing, right? Like, I mean, I was very middle, lower class growing up. My parents didn't really leave me anything. And I, I wasn't rich. I never had brand new cars. So everything I've attracted into my life is literally what I've attracted into my life. Like what I've desired, I've put out and I've got it back in return. But I want you to like go back to, you know, when I'm doing these podcasts weekly, I'm sort of building you guys up for a bigger picture, right? Because I've asked my guides this. I've asked them in what order do I do this? They're the ones guiding me. They want me to talk about law of attraction. Next week, we're going to talk about shadow work. Okay. I'm also going to start sprinkling in some, uh, like paranormal podcasts here and there. So we will go back to that content probably next week. Um, but I'm really just building you guys up to get you to a point where you kind of understand in the direction that we're going, which is right now I'm referencing back to Dolores Cannon. Okay. Dolores can and, and me going back to the other side right? Me experiencing the other side, um, watching my life review and understanding I just watched my movie play out. I need to go back and finish it. That really does play into the manifestation. Go back to yourself and wonder, what have I neglected in my life? What have I left out? What are the missing puzzle pieces that are my passions that I should have been continuing to pursue? So for my example, for you, it's Ghost Girl Diaries, obviously, is my number one passion. But in the midst of doing all the paranormal film stuff and being a producer, I totally neglected my other passions, which is things like hair, makeup, fashion, right? Also, um, I was learning to play guitar for a while and I gave that up and I, I played piano since I was eight and I haven't, I haven't touched a piano in years. That's another goal that I'm working towards right now. Okay. But <clears throat> when we're talking about law of attraction, okay. I'm going to talk often in this podcast about vibrating at a higher level. And I talk about not being like toxic with vibrating at a higher level. What does that mean exactly? Okay. When you think about having $5 million in your bank account, what does that make you feel? What are the feelings, the vibrations within you that, how do you feel when you open your phone, you look in your banking app and your app says $5 million? That is what I mean, that you need to be vibrating at a higher frequency, okay? You need to hold on to those feelings because that, in turn, is jumping timelines, which we're going to talk about in the next couple of podcasts. And that's it's not just law of attraction, it's manipulating your reality, okay? But I have to get, I know that with, the, you know, when I talk to my guides about this, or I've talked to my spirit guides, I'm like, they're like, well, you know, the law of attraction is so like 3D, you know, that's so a 3D way of explaining it. We don't want you to talk about the law of attraction. We want you to talk about manipulating your reality, jumping timelines, creating, you know, manifesting the reality that you want to live in. I said, I understand that. But for the human brain, we have to start with the law of attraction because that's the most common thing that we've talked about and seen in society. So we're starting here first. But just understand that it's going to be going in another direction. They're going to take that law of attraction that we're talking about today and evolve it into an, another another direction. But I need you to have like a core basis, right? Like this is the core basis of what I'm trying to 
get you guys to, to understand what I've seen on the other side and, and how you can manipulate it into your life. Okay. So going back to Dolores Cannon, we come here, earth is a school. It is, well, you're only here incarnated to understand that everything around you, everything in your life, you have manifested and created out of energy. The chair you're sitting in is energy. The TV that you're watching me through, whether it's your phone or streaming it on your Roku through YouTube, or you're listening to me on Spotify, all of those items you have created through energy, right? You've manifested those items by how? Going to work, making money, buying an iPhone, buying a television, buying a computer, right? It doesn't matter. It's all energy, okay? The same thing is like your core vibration within you as a person. You're just wearing a human suit. That's what you need to start thinking of this as, okay? You're wearing a human suit. You're not a human. You're a soul having a human experience. And if that soul is inside of you, and on the other side, you've had incarnations and you've done all of these amazing things and you own all these homes. And now you have graduated to a level that you've incarnated to this difficult earth school. And, and in your part of my collective, if, you, if everything I've been res is resonating with you, if you've been on this journey with me with Ghost Girl Diaries for a long time. We are a part of the same collective. We purposely incarnated together. It doesn't matter if you're older than me, younger than me. That's not age doesn't matter because it's the soul, right? You are a master manifester already. You have it within you. We are all our own beacons of light and energy. Think of it as, think of it as a PSB7. Let's talk about paranormal equipment, right? You know how when we're using a PSB7, a ghost box, spirit box in investigating, sometimes it takes a long time to fine tune what channel, the fast pace, the volume, sometimes you go AM, sometimes you go FM, sometimes you go forward, sometimes you go backwards, right? You are tuning into the frequency of that property, right? That haunted asylum, wherever you're at. It has a specific frequency. Haven't you ever been to locations for some reason you have to tune into AM and you're like, why do I have to tune into whatever? If that's the frequency here. That's the portal of that location. You are your own portal. You are your own beacon. You have your own unique one single frequency within you. No one else in the universe has your same frequency. Once again, you can be married. You can have spouses. You can have boyfriends. You can have girlfriends. You can have children. Yes, you're going to take care of those children, but you are still vibrating at your own frequency. doesn't matter. So if you are your own beacon, what you seek is already seeking you. And I mean that quite literally. Okay. So whatever you have manifested or want to manifest in the world, it's also seeking you. And the reason is, is because whatever that vibration is, is your unique frequency. No one else has that frequency. And I know you're going to look at me and be like, well, like, you know, you make it sound so easy. Like that's because I have learned to, to shed the indoctrinated things we have learned in society. I've gotten rid of all of those ideologies and thought processes. Back, going back to the industrial age, right? You have to work hard for your money. My parent, my mom worked so hard. Oh my God. Sometimes she would have, she was an interior designer. She did amazing by the way. But when she would do, especially Christmas time was her busy season. She was also a jeweler. She had her own jewelry business. Um, but she worked like sometimes 10, 14 hours a day doing interior design. It was crazy. And she made a lot of money and she made good money, but that's that same thing that's been indoctrinated in us. You have to work hard for your money, but what if you don't? Because that's also part of the law of manifestation that I learned, which is I started studying millionaires. Not everyone wants to be a millionaire, right? And that's cool. That's fine. You don't have to be a millionaire. The reason I want to be a millionaire is so that I can fund Ghost Girl Diaries, right? That's the only way I'm going to get it funded because the first season alone is probably going to be somewhere between like 500 to 1 million, 500,000 to $1 million. It's, it's very expensive. The first season is always the worst. The first three seasons are the worst. They're the cheapest, but yet most expensive. And then if you get past that three season hump, salaries keep going up, right? Which is a good thing, but the money's got to come from somewhere. So what I thought to myself, my thought process, if I need to be a millionaire to make my own series, I need to start studying other millionaires. And the problem is, is that millionaires don't work hard for their money. 
they have five or six, 10, 12 different streams of income. Often it's called passive income where they make income while they sleep, literally. Now I'm not gonna go into that unless you guys really want me to. That's kind of not, not the point of this stream. But the reason I brought that up is they manifested money, but without having to work hard. That may not be your manifestation. You may have a different manifestation. I mean, let's talk about my manifestations. I want to make my own cosmetics line, right? I'd love to make a vegan, cruelty-free cosmetics line, goth cosmetics line, although inclusive for anyone, even, you know, the basic girls that don't like the crazy eye makeup that I wear. But how do you make that happen? You know what I mean? Now, right now, I think I really needed a break from Ghost Girl Diaries. So sometimes taking a step away from your manifestations is good too, so that you can get very clear and detailed of what you need and what you want with it. So in this stream, I'm going to talk about that a lot too. Be very detailed with your manifestations, exactly what you want. Vibrate at the frequency that you need. But it comes with a cost. It comes with a cost. If you really want to manifest your dreams and you're really ready to live your authentic life and step into your sole purpose on this planet and your authentic timeline. And the cost it comes with is a couple of things. One, people are going to be mad at you for starting to manifest and get what you want. Because people, society, your friends, your family are going to look at you and be like, why, why are you, you know, making all this money and not having to work hard? And here I am having to do this. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is those relationships start to fail and they start to fall away. So there's a lot of responsibility that comes in with living your most authentic timeline when it comes to manifestations. But that's also why I'm such a, I push and push people so hard. I've even spoken on tribal lands because I'm indigenous. My family's Cherokee. I am registered with my, the Cherokee Nation. I've gotten lots of scholarships from different tribes <clears throat> and I will go. Well, it's been, it's been a few years. It's been about five years, but I would go to the tribal lands and I would communicate and talk about manifesting your future and not being afraid to step into your highest timeline. And it's scary for, for tribal is I would specifically talk to women because women of color, are, you know, tribal lands, um, are usually the most under uneducated, undereducated and, um, neglected in the process of furthering their education. So I would try to talk them into saying like, Hey, you can do this. Like, it's okay to, you know, you're going to have fear leaving the reservation, but you can do this. Like you are not only helping yourself and your future self, but you're also helping the tribe. You can come back and help someday with the tribe, but it's always fear. We always go back to fear. And that's the last thing I wanted to bring into this before I go back to the regular podcast. <clears throat> I just I had to add this little blurb in there. You need to remember what you seek is already seeking you. You incarnated for a specific reason. I don't know what that is. I've talked about it. It can be very small. It can be very large. There's no right or wrong. Just know that you're the only one that has that manifestation. I've talked about this saying, Ghost Girl Diaries, I have a different perception of reality than Kat does. Although Kat's a producer and works side by side with me, she's also still doing theater and opera, which is not something I want to do. So she's on her own timeline, right? She wants to manifest Ghost Girl Diaries, but I'm the sole driver of this train, right? No one can help me manifest this. This is my own vibration, my own frequency. I am my own beacon. I've talked about the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriend that I had, who was a savant with a guitar. He should have taken his guitar with him, and he should have been a world-famous guitarist, unbelievable metal guitarist, but he gave up his dreams. I don't know what your plan is. I don't know what your passions are, but that's what you're here, and that's what you're supposed to do. It can be as small as becoming a mom. It can be as small as being a mom, starting a family. A lot of people want to be entrepreneurs and have their own business and want to travel the world, right? Those are really common uh, manifestations, right? It's not impossible, but you have to get back in alignment and in tune with your true self. And it starts with, you know, removing all of these indoctrinated things that are from society that are stuck in our head. I understand you have to make money. I understand that you have to make money to pay bills and pay rent. So we're not talking about like la 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 head up in the clouds and like, oh yeah, go quit your job tomorrow and a million dollars is going to show up on your door. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is once you start doing the legwork for whatever your manifestation is, I don't know what that means. 
you will start seeing the fruits of your labor come in, even if it's the littlest sign, even if it's the littlest sign. And I'm referencing back to myself again. I have been on TV how many times? Probably 10 or 15 with different documentaries with Zach, Ghost Adventure. I've been on Ghost Adventures before. I've done a lot of different things and those are all manifestations and I come from nothing. So stop telling yourself it's impossible. Although if you tell yourself it's impossible, you are not wrong. You are what your thoughts are, which is so scary to me because I even watched this in my life review. Anytime I would think or do a negative thing in my life or like talk myself down, I had instant karma or instant gratification of that. Because once again, the universe does not know good or bad. It just knows vibration. Whatever you do and think will become, period. I know that and people get frustrated like, oh my God, all this bad stuff keeps happening and it's just snowballing and bad, bad, bad. And like, look, trust me, I can say that too. Like my parents died back to back, but I still kept my vibration. I still did to be the Jean Benet Ramsey documentary and I still filmed with Motionless and White, which tells me I was still in the right vibration, although I was freaking traumatized. So if I can do it, you can do it, right? And once again, what are you doing to keep your vibrations up? What are your thought processes? What are you manifesting? Get freaking specific. I'll give you another example. I don't usually talk about, I'm looking at my vision board right now because I have them all over my house. This isn't necessary, but I still do my vision boards, right? This is one that's on my other computer screen, okay? I don't talk about this because um, it's private, right? Like your manifestations are private. You don't want to let outside energy in. But one thing I will talk about is some cars that I'm trying to manifest right now. I drive a Jeep Wrangler. I love my four-door Jeep Wrangler. I want another one. I want a brand new Jeep Wrangler, but they have the new like e-hybrid Wranglers out. I don't know if you've seen them. Anyway, I want one of those. I also really want a Porsche. My point of this is, is I've been really focusing on my manifestations lately. I've been waking up, talking about my affirmations. I told you guys I am famous. Um, I, you know, Ghost Girl Diaries is the most famous paranormal series on television. Like I have the list of affirmations I tell myself two or three times a day. It's pretty big. It takes a good five minutes to go through them. But today I noticed everywhere I drove, like, so I made a bunch of errands. I went Halloween shopping. Every time I was at a stoplight in my Jeep Wrangler, I was surrounded by expensive luxury cars. I mean, Porsche, sure, but even more than that, like I had a SUV Lamborghini in front of me today. And yes, like Vegas has a lot of money, but I mean, everywhere I went today, luxury cars were starting to show up in my reality. And that is the first stop, the very first sign that your manifestations are slowly coming in. You start to see them in your external reality, which is also why it's important when you notice angel numbers, you notice, you know, signs in front of you. I've been seeing a lot of feathers lately, like white and gray feathers. Those have spiritual meaning. So when you're doing these affirmations and you're aligning to your highest timeline, whatever that is, and you're doing these manifestations, no, it's not going to show up on your door tomorrow, but start paying attention to the external world around you because you will notice things will begin to change. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was Bashar. I saw a couple of clips of Bashar talking, which once again, I'm going to keep referencing him because I really think he's a great spiritualist. I'm here to tell you what I experience when I do travel to the other side. I'm still traveling to the other side every few nights, every other night. But Bashar is um, the extraterrestrial being who channels through Daryl, the human, and he essentially, he can give you advice from a spirit guide, higher self perspective. So he words things that might be a little bit differently than I do, but it's the same. Bashar said this, when you are manifesting and when you are doing the law, he doesn't like the law of attraction either, which my guides don't either. He doesn't like it called that. But when you're doing the law of attraction and you're bringing things in and now you've changed your vibration, you are literally shifting timelines or shifting dimensions. Now, the problem is, is that a lot of us in the human world, when we think about shifting realities, shifting dimensions, quantum physics, it has to look 
like something we see in the movies, right? Like, oh no, I can't like spiral into a new dimension. I didn't see like the ground shift or I didn't see like a spiral in the air. No, 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 no. You don't see that stuff happen. But in a split second, you can literally shift realities if that's what you want. But you have to get very specific with what you want. I I am this. I am manifesting this. I am this. I am a millionaire. I am famous. I'm a famous filmmaker. Ghost Girl Diaries is the most famous paranormal series that's ever been on television. I am in a new reality. But the question that a lot of people get, the frustration is the human mind. This is Bashar. Okay, like we're stuck in this 3D, this physical, tangible body right here tangible items in front of me like these tarot cards like this is all 3d right so it looks the same what do you mean i shifted timelines everything looks the same yeah but don't let that fool you although you're shifting timelines you're shifting dimensions when you're manifesting you're not changing the physical world that you're on bashar says but think of it as there are now glass walls around you and that's what you're seeing through So although you're seeing the old friends and the old people that you had to get rid of in order to shift timelines, that doesn't mean they're gone. They're still on the same physical world, but they are in a different reality because now you've shifted out of that reality. So there are glass walls that you're seeing through because yes, we're on the same physical planet, but you're not in the same dimension. You're not in the same reality as them. So when I heard Bashar say that, and also that aligned with what my guides told me when I woke up from asking them tons of questions, suddenly it clicked and I was like, okay, which is also why I'm preaching you're a beacon. And I'm doing this because my guides always do this. You have a light running through you and this is part of your soul. Okay. And this beacon, it already has its own vibration. And honestly, when you start manifesting and you get specific with what you want, this beacon's going to shut on. It's going to go and it's going to be like, all right, she's awake. He's awake. Let They're awake. Let's freaking go. Let's do the thing. And all of a sudden, everything's going to start moving and everything's going to change. But understand, you also have to shed stuff that no longer serves you in order to make room for things that do serve you. So there, when, when you start manifesting, there's a lot of tower moments, but they're not necessarily bad. It just means... You have to get rid of the bad in order to get the good. And also with manifesting, whatever that is, whatever you're trying to manifest. Remember this, and Bashar said this too. My guide said this to me and it didn't really make sense to me. I couldn't really understand what they were saying. But then the next day I woke up, I got on TikTok and a video of Bashar popped up, which I assume was sent to me from my guides. And then I was like, okay, now I understand. Bashar said this, he said, You have to focus on what is my future self look like. That's part of manifesting. I want to, you need to manifest what do, and I'm not talking the cheese ball stuff. What do you see yourself in five years married with a kid in a house? No, 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 no. I'm freaking specific. It doesn't even have to be five years. In one year, in six months from now, what do you want? Five million dollars in your bank account? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, and don't put limits on yourself where you think you're not good enough to have it because that's also, and I used to be the same way. I would have this identity of like, I don't think I'm deserving of anything. So if you have those limiting beliefs in your brain, then you will limit your power of manifesting, which is where I'm saying this process is you have to undo a lot of what society and our families have done. And it's a hard process, but it is possible. It is possible. And when you step into your authentic self and your authentic timeline and you're doing whatever you want to do, even if it's start that business, whatever, I'm telling you, the manifestations will just start rolling in. Now, it may not always look what you planned for it to be. So remember not to have a specific outcome. And the example I keep giving, and I'm, I'm trying to reiterate this. I'm not trying to sound like a broken record. I just want to reiterate. Don't have a defining point on the manifestation like I did, Ghost Girl Diaries. I kept saying, this production company, this um, network is gonna sign me. Well, the problem is, is now I've limited myself to the 400 other production companies, networks, and producers that could have signed me by only focusing on this one. So don't look at what the exact outcome's gonna be, just what is the passion that's involved for what you want. And that's how you start your manifestations. 
Now, another key to this puzzle is keeping your vibration up. And that's really hard. I know that's hard. And, but I want to use me as an example because I, I mean, how do I even word this without sounding weird? My mom was murdered, right? Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. It was a dark time in my life. It's still a dark time in my life. It's never going away. That's going to be trauma that I have to deal with for the rest of my life, right? I am shocked, stunned to my core. I hate when people say you're going to heal someday. I don't think so. It was dark. It was darker than dark, right? And even in that moment of my mother being murdered at the hands of someone else, intentionally taking her life, I manifested two of the biggest things in my career. One, working on set with Motionless and White Werewolf. And two, I got to film a documentary on Tubi for the haunting case of Jean Benet Ramsey and the true crime murder that happened in Boulder, Colorado. How did I do that in the midst of my mom's death? I kept my vibration up, which means that no matter what trauma you have been through, yes, you listening, looking through the screen, no matter what trauma you have been through, you have a choice. You can either sit and sulk or you can get up. It's really a choice. There's no right or wrong answer. You get to make the decision, right? And even through my healing journey, even through the trauma that I was going through, I kept my vibration up enough to bring in some major manifestations into my life. Major, right? What does it mean keeping your vibration up? Because that's really complicated, right? I'm not saying be toxic happy all the time, right? I'm not saying walk through life and you, you know, break your arm and you're laughing and happy like, oh, my vibration's high. No, you're allowed to experience pain. You're allowed to experience sadness, right? But you have to have strength behind that vibration. So what I'm talking about is every single day, something bad could happen. How are you going to still keep your vibration up? Rather than crying and being sad constantly over everything that keeps happening, you say, I've got this. You turn it into, I don't want to say anger. I want to say power. Transmute your energy from sadness, transmute it to power. From anger, transmute it to power. And that's what I did with my mom's death was the whole time I was like, I'm sad and I can do this. I can get through this day. I've chosen to live. I'm going to get through this. I can do this through all of the heartache, all of the pain, all of the trauma, all of the hard days. I kept telling myself, you can do this. So now other days you do need to keep yourself happy. How do you keep your vibrations happy? How do you keep your vibrations up? What are you feeding yourself, right? Because the honest to God truth is junk food and fast food is not good for you. If you're eating fast food every day, it is definitely bringing your energy levels down. Are you exercising every day or at least five times a week? I'm not sitting here trying to sound like a doctor. This isn't about doctors. This is about me telling you what I learned from the other side. We get one vessel. One. We get one vessel. And what happens when we get this one vessel? Oftentimes we let it go. We don't take care of it. We sit around, we watch Netflix, and we eat, and we eat, and we eat some more. Once again, that's not the wrong answer. There's no right or wrong. You can do that. But don't come asking me, how, how do I keep my vibration up? Because you've got to take care of your vessel. If your vessel doesn't feel good, it's communicating to you, I don't feel good. And I'm also not saying be toxic on the other side and say that you have to work out two hours every single day, seven days a week and only eat salads. Although eating salads would be really healthy for you, right? But I'm just saying, find a balance, find a good balance. And, and I know I can speak on this too because I gained, I was 300 pounds, right? I mean, I was chonky. I was not healthy. I was not eating well and I was not working out. And I had to undo that. And it's not something that's going to happen overnight. But once you, what does it take? They say it takes 30 to 60, 30 to 90 days to get a routine down. So you have to make yourself uncomfortable and you have to keep your energy levels up in order to get your manifestations in. Which means trying to stay happy and healthy and living a healthy life. Like that's what I mean when I talk about the law of attraction. It's so much more than just one thing. It's, it's like, a, it's like a, a machine that has to be running. Like it's like 
every little part of the machine has to be running in order for it to be doing the, doing its job. And your guides will step in to help you, but you have to also put the effort out for it, right? It's what I've said before, you can't be unrealistic. You can't say, I want to manifest an elephant and expect an elephant to just show up in your bedroom. That's not how it works. You can't say, I'm manifesting a Ferrari, but only have $10 in your account. You don't need to worry about how you're going to get the money, but you do need to have a plan of abundance, right? And that plan always goes back to what is your passion, period. It's really easy. I was just listening to Taylor Swift talk the other day. She did like an um, interview not too long ago. I'm a fan of T-Swift. And she said something like, um, I can't remember the specifics, so you'll have to look it up. But she said, I can't believe I get paid to be weird. She was like, I think I'm really weird and different. And she goes, I want to be a person on a pedestal to show everyone watching that you can just be yourself and get paid to do it. And I'll tell you what, from being on the other side and experiencing my life review, I learned that too. The most abundance and manifestations will only come into your life when you're living your most authentic self. And it's hard, right? Because you're breaking out of these like societal, like society forces us to all look alike. We all have to look like Kim Kardashian. We all have to look like Kylie Jenner and, and do things a certain way. But that's when we're blocking our manifestations too, because we're not supposed to be, we're one in a million, literally one in a million. Who are you? Sure, it's fine to take, you know, inspiration from others around you, from society, from people that you put on pedestals. Like, I love Gwen Stefani, but I cannot replicate her. I don't want to replicate her. She doesn't do ghost hunting, right? What are your passions? What are you passionate about? Don't put blocks up. Immediately putting blocks up, saying, I'm too old. I can't do that anymore. Blah, 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 blah. Well, then, then you're right. Once again, there's no right or wrong. Whatever you tell yourself is true. Whatever you say is true. I really think that even going into like weird discussions is a little bit of a tangent, but like when we're talking about health and law manifestation, I think that cancer stems from, I mean, not only like food, bad foods that we eat that aren't, you know, not organic and bad air and water that we, we eat and breathe and digest, but I also think it cancer and really bad things, bad illnesses not necessarily in children, but in adults stem from people that have really bad depression, anxiety, because they're not living their full, authentic, true self. Or when you're harboring in fear and anger. Now, I'm not saying all. Don't take that out of my mouth. But I really think, and Dolores Cannon talks about this too. She says that it's from, if you are harboring anger or fear or resentment or anxiety towards things, it will make you sick. It doesn't have to necessarily just be cancer. But that's why taking care of yourself is so, so important. You're, you're, you have one vessel and you don't get another one. So what are you going to do? And, and this goes back to me seeing my life review. Life is quick. I know that while we're here on this 3D planet, it feels like, oh my God, this is a long hundred years I have to live. But when I watched my life review, I was like, holy crap, like that flew by. I feel like I don't have a lot of time left. And I was like rushing to get back. Like I have to finish what I started. I don't have a lot of time left. And a lot of people got mad at me because they were like, why are you giving up paranormal? You're giving up paranormal and you're doing fashion and makeup and you've never done that before. That's not true. I've always done fashion and makeup. I did it before paranormal. But what happened was I went back to my life review and I saw the parts of my life I was neglecting. And I remembered how much I loved fashion, makeup, and hair, and I was neglecting it. I had dropped everything else for just paranormal. And my guides were like, hey, guess what? Ghost Girl Diaries isn't going to get signed until you have all the wheels turning. You incarnated because you love makeup, and you love beauty, and you love hair, and you love fashion, and you're a filmmaker, and you're a singer, and you love to go ghost hunting. But you have to incorporate all of this back into your life before we're going to start handing you these manifestations out. So I rushed back into my body and I was like, okay. And guess what happened? When I started living my authentic life, which is also beauty, hair, and makeup, I started making brand deals like that. Companies started sending me you know, free makeup and free hair and free products. I have extensions in right now free fashion, you know, how, how many times I've worked with Romway. 
And that's because I am living my truest, authentic vibration self. Currently, as of tonight, which is literally what's 10.45 p.m. on July 23rd, 2003, I am preparing to start Ghost Girl Diaries back up again. I'm going to do short form content on just TikTok and Reels, Instagram, Facebook. I'm sort of putting YouTube aside. That'll have to be for another stream. My point is, is I have all of this running now. I have the full machine going. My guides are like, okay, she remembered who she was. She's back in her vessel. She's back in herself. And that's part of manifesting in the law of attraction is you have to live your full authentic self and follow your heart and follow your passions. Now, I've also talked about this before too. Some people have really big life missions, right? Like I've obviously had a big one trying to get Ghost Girl Diary signed for 10 years, right? It's been horrible. It's been hard. Not everyone has a hard life mission. Some people, my mother incarnated to be a mom. That was her only incarnation. And to trigger her family around her and take care of her family, that was her mission. It was not very big, although it was very important, right? So it's okay if you have a small manifestation or if it's not like mine. That's the next rule when you're manifesting. Don't ever compare yourself to anyone else. And I had that. I had a problem with that for a long time. I'll be the first to admit that. You guys have seen me pull all these people in with ghost girl diaries, trying to get it signed with all these people. And it hasn't worked, has it? Because their manifestations are not aligned with mine. I don't need a bunch of people to be here with ghost girl diaries. I just need me. And it took me a long time to figure that out. And I'd get frustrated because I'd hire people and then they didn't work out and they'd quit and our, you know, our energy didn't mix. And it's like, God, what am I doing wrong? I wasn't manifesting by myself. I wasn't worried about me and Ghost Girl Diaries. My journey isn't meant to, I mean, I know Kat, that's not what I'm talking about. But my journey is a solo. Your journey is a solo. Kat's journey is a solo. Not everyone, no one can go along with you on your own. Like, think about some of the biggest, even directors. Look at even Zach, for example, with Ghost Adventures, right? He's the only one at the top. Sure, he works with Aaron and Billy and stuff. But, like, he's it because his path is only his own. So when you're manifesting, you can only manifest your own path. You can't force people to come along with you. They don't want to. And they're not gonna because they have their own manifestation. There's a lot, you have to get this little machine running and then you have to keep your vibrations vibrating high. A lot of people ask me, okay, well, if you have to keep your vibrations high, I'm not saying be toxic happy all the time. I'm just saying I can do this. I can get through this no matter what the day throws at me. I've got this, right? You can, you also need to remember to learn when to take breaks and learn that it is okay to take breaks. I took an entire week off this last week to rest I used to be the kind of person where I would work, 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 work. I'd work 24 seven. I would get like four or six hours worth of sleep and I'd get up and do it all over again. When my paranormal channel was at its peak, when it had millions of views, right? I was working 24 seven on that sucker. And I was not allowing myself to rest because my thought process was, oh, I've just got to keep going. Someday I'll be able to rest. But like until then, no, that's like a toxic human trait. That's from the industrialization age. Like you don't have to work 24 seven. Although if that's what you tell yourself, you're right. Remember, whatever you put out into the universe, you're very powerful. Your thoughts become things. So be careful what you think. Haven't you ever just think about like you've been driving and you're like, oh man, I hope I'm not late for work. And all of a sudden you're late. All of a sudden you hit you. So there's an accident in front of you or you hit a red light. Your thoughts become things immediately, which is why it's so important to vibrate high. And when you're vibrating high all the time, and it can't just be for a day or two. You have to hold that vibration. Hold it. You have to believe it with your soul or it's not going to come through. You do have to kind of get obsessed with it. There's different manifestation techniques. There's one called the 369 technique. If you're interested, look that one up. The one that I love is the 777 technique. So you'll have to look that one up too. But that one is the one how I manifested being with motionless on white on set. I kept my vibration high. And when I know that I need to disconnect from the internet or disconnect from talking with friends, I honor myself. When I need to take a break for a week from work, I honor myself. So you have to keep all these things in mind. But I'm telling you, it works. 
I'm telling you it works. I'm walking proof that manifestations work. So anyway, that is it for this little podcast. I hope this helps. Keep your vibrations high. Be very, very specific with what you want. Do affirmations and take care of your body because you get one of them, right? Make sure you guys subscribe to our podcast if you haven't already. Make sure you give us a follow and a like on YouTube. And we'll do a shadow work uh, podcast next. We'll catch you later, guys. Thank you. Good night.